Hey guys, Robin with Big Doodle Dreams. And this sweet girl, this is Penny. And, and Miss Penny is, is done with her career here with me. Um, she didn't she didn't get to have that many winners I it was mm -hmm, yes I know the last couple times that uh, that I allowed her to breed she didn't get pregnant so therefore I've had her spayed and and it's interesting because when when that happens when they decide whatever their body just doesn't get pregnant I instantly start worrying and think oh my gosh I, I you know I tell the vet and the vet when they do their spay, they investigate and make sure. And of course, she was fine. So who knows what it was? She was a wonderful mother. Um, so Miss Penny is, she's an English Springer Spaniel. I love it. She looks like she has the head of a white kitty. See, there's the kitty's head on top of her head. She's so pretty. Yes, you are, you're beautiful. So she's a red sable and white, that's her color. And, and like I said, she's now been spayed. Um, no, she's not available. She has a home. Her home was chosen months ago. The family came and met her and, and made their decision months ago. And, and they were hoping for a puppy out of her. And because she didn't have puppies, I made a decision. Her, her daughter, one of her daughters had their first litter and, and the daughter did a great job, but she didn't really, I don't know, it wasn't her thing. She raised all her puppies, you know, full, everybody was fine. She nursed everybody, there was no issues. There was no issues with the puppies. Um, but she wasn't, I don't know, she didn't enjoy it. I mean, this, this girl, what was so sad to me is that she couldn't get, she didn't have another litter. She loves babies. She will lay down and roll over and expose her belly and try to feed other, you know, even older dogs. <laughs> even older dogs, right? You're gonna offer it up to anybody. Um, so, yeah, even, even when she didn't have milk, just because of that mother nature in her, she was that way, so. But this video is not all about you necessarily, even though you are leaving me and I'm very sad. But this video is for the sole purpose of um, discussing adopting an older dog and all of that stuff because I always say, you know, if you're looking for a breeder, if you're looking for a puppy, if you, you know, I, I, I have not necessarily covered too much in terms of adopting an older dog. I have one video on my YouTube channel now that actually covers that. Um, so yeah, I do have something out there, but it, it would be a good job now to discuss it again. So, you know, when you're, you're looking for a breed and a breeder and a this and a that, da, 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 okay. If you're not at that degree and you don't care what breed you get, you just want a nice dog, then sure, you certainly can go through the Humane Society, your shelter, um, whatever, the local dog rescue or the breed that you're interested, go through their rescue organization. But what I'm gonna share with you is that a lot of these rescue organizations have restrictions on ages of kids in the house. And, and that is, I mean, honestly, it's for the safety of your kids, but it's also to ensure that they don't put a dog in the wrong environment. And, and then what's the result? Could be lifelong for a kid. You know, the, a kid is just a kid. They've got all their life ahead of them. So um, there, there are reasons behind that. So if you have really small kids, you really might want to just forego the whole idea of getting an older dog. Now, could be a chance. You could snag a puppy at the, the local Humane Society. There's a chance. Uh, just make sure you don't have kids with allergies because obviously if you have kids with allergies They're gonna be devastated if you have to get rid of this brand new baby that you brought in um, So uh, There's there are issues around taking on an older dog um, Unless you have all of the background and everything and you know, you know what the dog has been exposed to and the behaviors and You know all of that um, most of the time you don't. 
to go to the Humane Society, you're not going to be given that information. While, yes, they may temperament test the animals, it does not mean that they're temperament testing them in multiple, multiple environments. Each environment can, can provide different responses. It depends upon the dog, the individual dog. Um, do not assume that just because the dog was fine there that you're going to get home and they're just going to be perfectly dandy. Most of the time that's not the case. What I will tell you on a rescue is that it takes one month for every year of age. Don't eat the hair. Are you trying to eat the hair? So if, if a dog, if you rescue a two-year-old dog, you need to plan for at least two months of adjustment good girl. Um, because if they're two years old, it's going to take at least two months. Could take longer. Could very well take longer. Um, dogs that have never lived inside of a home that have zero uh, experience inside of a home, dogs that were literally raised in a shelter and kept in a shelter, and you know, they're going to be harder. They're going to require more extensive potty training. Um, you know, the upside to it is you feel like you've done something right. You've saved an animal. You've you know you've done something. If you have the ability. If you have the skill, if you have the experience, if you are in a situation where you don't have kids with allergies, if, I mean, if all the stars align, then by absolutely do it. Um, suggestions I have for you, introduce a crate right away. Um, not for consequences. Crates are not used for consequences. I have lots and lots and lots of videos out there on my YouTube channel discussing crate. I'm showing what kind of crate, how to use it, all of that. There's really good reasons behind it. Um, but essentially what you're doing is you're providing the dog with a place that belongs to him or her, that makes them feel safe and secure. You can have them take a break in there. You can feel like it's okay to leave this brand new dog that you brought home while you go to the store. And you're not going to be afraid that the dog is going to lose it while you're gone. So the crate is a really good thing. And, and if, if done correctly, if used correctly, it will be their favorite place. Because it will be their safe place. Um, dogs need a safe place. They really do. And, you know, just like cats need a safe place. All animals need a safe place. So, um... A crate, a proper crate, used correctly, not for punishment, never, ever, ever for punishment. You're not going to get a dog very far if all you use is consequences. Reward systems do work better. Um, yeah, so, all right, you've decided you're going to bring home a dog. You need to take into consideration how long you're gone during the day uh, because obviously people that work all day, I. I mean, if you're getting an older dog, I guess your assumption is is that the dog will hold it all day and it really won't matter. And and that, I won't even, my guys are used to us being home. So this little girl, she is going to be with her family and, and they have also, they're taking Opal, the one I just told you about, that I decided to retire her early. And, and she and her mother, so Opal and Penny will be going together. Um, and it, it will be great. They, they will have the automatic built-in two dogs um, without having to go through puppy stage. But that doesn't mean that taking on two adult dogs is going to be a cakewalk. Um, to some degree, things will be much easier, like the potty training and the housebreaking. Yes, my guys are they're house trained. Um, but you can't just give a brand new dog free range of the entire house, ever. When you bring home a new dog, you should limit the area close to where the door is to go to the bathroom, what I refer to as the magic potty door. If you start them off in the area so that they have an understanding of where that door is, right? So that you can, you can let the family know that, hey, I gotta go out. So it's interesting because this girl doesn't bark to go out. She's more likely to go stand next to the door. Her daughter, on the other hand, yep, she barks, that's right. 
she's vocal and Penny is not. So uh, it's interesting, you know, mother, daughter, you would think same, yeah, they have some similarities, but they have, they have some things that are not um, terribly similar. So, and that is one of them. It's interesting because I think Opal, her daughter has more spaniel characteristics, but has more poodle behavior. Yeah. You're a good girl. So she's, I'm just, all I'm doing is trimming her up. And in this way, she can be nice and tidy for the new family when they get her. Um, so, you know, benefits to taking on an older dog. Yeah, um, if you have a background on them, like in the case of, of this family taking on my two, uh, mine have health testing behind them. They, um, they've been raised indoors. I can tell you all about every single trait and behavior that these girls have. Um, I will be accessible to the family forever. So when I retire an older dog, I have some very specific rules about when I do this and, and who I retire to. Um, so obviously an interview and meeting of the dog and long conversations and all of that. I will also, oh my goodness. I will also let you know that I believe that I'm responsible for these guys that I've raised that are my older that have been here. Anybody that's been here for a year or more, that means that I've raised them. And if they spent a year or more with me, then I'm responsible for them. So if they go to the new home and things aren't working out, I need to be notified because either we've got to work on problem solving through whatever the problem may be, or I take them back. I refund the money and I take them back. Any of my retirees that have left here, if things aren't working out at any time, I will refund the money and I will find the right home. To me, it's not that the dog failed, it's not that the new owner failed. Um, lots of times I blame myself for it and I say, well, you know, that wasn't the right family and you shouldn't have, you shouldn't have placed the dog in that family. So it does make me spend more time thinking about what I, what I could do differently next time or what, what questions didn't I ask that you know, would have maybe not placed this dog in this home. Um, so I'm very fussy on, on my process. But if you go through the Humane Society, I mean, pretty much you're gonna show up, you're gonna meet. Yes, you have an application um, and you'll pay an adoption fee, but there's no, there's no guarantee on the behaviors, the traits. There's no guarantee on any of that because you don't know until the dog is brought home and then they're put into the new environment. And, and sometimes you may not realize that there's any triggers at all until someone visits. And suddenly this strange tall man with a hat comes walking in and the dog freaks out. I mean, anything could be a trigger, you just don't know. Um, when you have the background on a dog, then you obviously have control over um, you know, having, having the knowledge, having, knowing what the background is and, and then determining whether or not you're the right home. So in the case of these girls, the family had wanted a puppy. Instead, they're getting, you know, a little, a girl that's a little older, which is great. They're getting mommy and baby. Oh, I know. You're so sweet though. Look up, look up. Mwah. You're a good girl. Um, so this, this will be interesting. I, I will be interested to see if because of two going together and two that are very fond, I know you are very fond of your daughter, aren't you? The two of them play together. Unbelievable. They love each other. They are, I mean, they just, it makes sense. This one Penny is really, really sweet and, and uh, yes, I know, and somewhat, somewhat, I know, somewhat shy. I love you too. Somewhat shy. 
and and Opal, her daughter, is, oh, yep, if you meet her, she'll be all up in your lap. It's guaranteed. I know. You are so sweet. You're such a doll baby. So I told them that what I would do is I would groom these girls up and that I would then maybe answer the questions because she had a bunch of questions about what the dogs come with. And I'll do that on the next video. I'll answer all of her questions. Um, but I figured at the very least, if I stood here and, got, and groomed them up, then um, not only would you get to see how these guys are groomed, because this is different. You haven't heard clippers running yet, right? Nope, no clippers yet. So this is different on how they're groomed. It is easier. Um, dogs that shed are easier to groom. And, and these guys do not shed year round. They, they are more seasonal. And if you run through the coat using some of these various tools that you've seen me using, and, and I've, entered, I've talked about all these tools and all of the other, my Mars Coat King, you know, the metal tooth comb for the ears. You know, there's, you, this is, we've been, do, you've seen all of these tools, but normally you see the clippers running throughout all the video. And, this is not going to have nearly the amount of clippering. Um, I will do between the pads. Right, girl? Yep. Uh, because we don't want her to be slipping and sliding. Uh, but no, both the girls are really easy for grooming, which is great. But um, I will be interested to see because Penny is four years old and Opal is just two. And, and, uh, I will be interested to see that if Penny, yes, I know, I love you, if she is able to make that transition faster because of having her daughter with her rather than just going alone. Um, so when dogs leave me, I'm like I said, I'm very, very fussy about where they go. Uh, it's very important to me because honestly, I don't, not that I don't mind getting him back, but I would much rather have the right home the first time and not have to have them come back. So, I know. Yep. Miss Penny is also, she's in the bathing bath tips and tricks video on my YouTube channel. And, and that's a really great video that explains what I use, what I suggest using. Um, all of that information on that page will give you know further details. Uh, no, I'm not going to make a video in the bathroom. I wish I had a grooming room. Maybe when we get to build, I will get to make myself have a nice grooming room. So this is not this this works. This space works for me, but I could definitely have a nicer facility. For now, all these, all my kids come in the house and and they all use my bathroom because that's the bathroom that I have and that's just the way it is. So I use a regular bathtub and the regular sprayer that comes down just like anybody else. So, yep. Yeah. So if you're considering an older dog, Please make sure that you are really dog savvy. Make sure that you are ready. Make sure that you have the time and the patience. Make sure you have the right supplies, a crate. Um, and, and please be cautious when you decide to introduce new things to this new dog because you really don't know what the dog has been exposed to. Please be careful when you make decisions to Oh, yes, I know, especially with little kids. So I'm gonna finish her, and then I will go ahead and take some pictures because shes you can see how icky she looks right now. So when I'm done, she'll be beautiful, and then I'll take some after pictures at the end of this. Right? Pretty girl. All right, guys, I will see you soon. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, leave me some comments. Let me know what else. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to cover more in the next video answering questions about what comes with one of my dogs, aside from obviously just all the love and raising. But guys, I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.